The tools required to install the inner finisher will be a large magnetic Phillips head screwdriver, a pair of needle nose pliers, and a small magnetic Phillips head screwdriver for tight spaces. The box will contain plastic and metal brackets used to install the inner finisher into the main copier engine, a small plastic bracket. The bag containing the metal rollers will also contain a small baggie with screws. These screws are important as they will be used to install the rails into the copier engine. The box also contains the main finisher unit, which is gray in color, as well as a gray output tray. Note that the gray output tray has a baggie with screws that you will need for installation of the unit. First, remove all packaging from the finisher unit. Once the packaging has been removed from around the door on the left-hand side of the unit, it can be opened and the remaining packaging can be removed. Also inside this door is a sticker pointing down to a retaining screw at the bottom of the unit. This screw and the sticker must be removed before continuing. The gray tray located below the main document feeder must be removed before the inner finisher can be installed. The white plastic covering must be removed before the gray tray. Remove the screw hole covers before proceeding. With the screw hole covers and screws removed from the white plastic cover, you simply bend slightly and pull forward. This will remove the plastic cover. The white cover, the screw hole covers, and the screws should be kept close by as you will need to reinstall them after the gray tray has been removed. Next, we will need to remove the screw hole covers and two screws from the gray tray. With the screws removed, the gray tray is then simply lifted from the machine and pulled towards you. If we are installing the inner finisher on either a model 876 or 825 copier, we will have to remove this gray panel on the inside of the machine by removing those screws. Before installing the finisher, you must also remove the hood from this bar located in the back of the copier. To remove the hood, Simply pull the tab back with your finger and pull. The hood will then release. Replace the white cover by simply guiding it in and snapping it at the top. Replace the screws and screw hole covers before proceeding. To install the metal rails inside the copier, First, locate the three metal divots. Next, slide the rail until the third hole lines up with the divot. This will lock the rail into place and expose the screw holes. You are ready to screw in the rails when they do not move to the touch and the plastic parts are towards the front of the copier. With the rails installed, the final step to preparing the copier to accept the inner finisher is to remove the white plate. The white plate simply snaps off and can be set aside. Next, this black bar with the power connector on the left hand side will be snapped into the uppermost row of holes in the back of the copier. When this is finished, the guide will be facing down and the right hand side of the bar will be lined up with the hole behind it. Install the bar's cable into this connection. This gray panel must be replaced prior to finishing the install on an E8 series copier. Failure to do so will result in a reattach output bins error. Next we will need to install the small black bracket. Remove it from the bag that contains the small black bracket and the small black screw. Keep the black screw aside, we will use that in a moment. The small bracket will be installed on the lower set of rollers at the back of the machine. The first step is to push down the roller that's in the middle. The hooks of the bracket will face the back of the machine. The roller will be pushed down and the bracket snapped into place. When the bracket is installed, 
it will hold the roller in place. The small black screw from the baggie will be installed in this hole that is at the top of the bar we installed a few moments ago. We are now ready to install the internal finisher into the copier. Make certain that the rails are slid all the way to the back position before proceeding. Line the internal finisher onto the rails and simply slide into position. You will not be able to move it when it is locked. Next, we will install the output tray onto this section of the internal finisher. Before proceeding, make certain that you have the output tray and the baggie of screws that came with the output tray. When the output tray is correctly installed, these plastic tabs on the bottom of the output tray will line up in the first and third holes on the metal bracket. The tray simply snaps into position and the plastic tabs are now through the first and third holes, ready for the screws. If the tray snapped in place, the screws can now be put in the four screw holes to connect the tray to the gray bar. With the output tray installed, the last step is to connect this cord to the back of the copier.